Hello and good morning. A day later than usual schedule of stamp and chat. So I'm just going to check that I'm live in the right place. Hopefully we'll have some people joining this morning as we're out of routine. Okay, we are live in the right place. Always, always the best start. So today I'm going to be using the Window Wishes bundle. Um, I'm only using one of the stamps, but I think the dies are just fabulous. They're really great. Love the actual window die, which I've been using kind of a lot from the set. Um, but also my six card class this month focuses on, on that bundle. And we're going to be doing three Christmas cards and three non-Christmas cards kind of using the dies and the stamps as well. So I'm combining that window wishes with the cup of tea bundle. So I'm kind of using sort of two bundles today, which I don't really like to do. I like to focus on one thing, but um, because the window wishes is very Christmassy, I'm kind of still teaming it with non-Christmassy things at the moment. So hello to those of you that are joining. I hope you are all keeping well weather here in Gloucestershire. It's a bit grey today. Um, weather says the sun is coming, but it is a little bit grey at the moment. It's warmish. It's warmish. It's 22 degrees in here in the studio, so it's warm enough in here. So good morning, Kate. How are you doing? Lovely to have you join us. Okay, I think without further ado, I might head you down to the desk. Got a few things happening with Stampin' Up. Obviously, it's the last day of the current celebration promotion today so I wouldn't leave it too late if you're placing an order online don't leave it until too late this evening um, we normally cut off by about quarter to 11 so I mean I'm normally in bed then <laughs> although I've I've got good at staying up until at least half 10 lately gone are the days of falling asleep at nine o'clock I've trained myself to stay up a bit later which is good um yeah so don't leave ordering too late um, I'm possibly going to be doing an order later so if there's something that you want you don't want to do the 6.95 shipping I can post it cheaper than that um, second class so just get in touch if there's something you want don't miss out on those fabulous celebration free gifts there's some really great offerings there so and also I was going to just share with you a little bit of information about the world card making day um, virtual get together which is on the 1st of October so I might put you down on my desk and share that with you so just looking at comments excuse the palm of the hand Let's move oh gosh move everything around I've got stuff everywhere this morning I feel like oh now my Gonna have to look at the. Won't let me. Buttons have moved. I couldn't find the flip button for a minute there. Slight panic attack. Good morning, Sarah. How are you doing? Let's just get some light on the subject. Yeah, I feel like I've got bits and pieces everywhere this morning. So I was just gonna have a quick chat with you about this event that is happening. So we have World Card Making Day on the 1st of October and Stamping Up have um, put together a virtual event. So anybody can join, it's free to join along and the details for this will be on the Stamping Up website. So stampingup.uk, I think that's right. Um, or .co.uk, the details will all be up there nearer the time. But they're offering information on what bundles they'll be using. So we'll create three cards during the session. And these are the three bundles that we'll be using. But we've got this exclusive new one, which I think I showed you last time. This printout isn't very good. Um, but this is available to order from tomorrow, 1st of September. How can it be September? Um, and if you purchase any of these bundles, you will get yourself a pack of pearls, the iridescent pearls for free. So, and it gives you a little list here of all the colors that we'll be using. So it should be a really great fun event. So let's put that to one side. 
We've also got starting tomorrow another promotion called Perfect Partners and it features six stamp sets in the current annual catalogue and Stampin' Up! have released some new die sets to go with them. So if you already have one of these, so like I've got the this Birthday Piggy stamp set, this one, but we've got this fabulous, how cute is that, die set that goes with it. Um, you could purchase it at the bundle price if you don't already have the stamps, but if you do, then you can get just the dies. So we've got six lovely new die sets here to complement products that we already have in our current catalogue. Of course, this is the last day, as I just said, last day for our current celebration. We've got some fabulous products in here that are free when you place an order. Um, I've been focusing on this paper. What's happened to my light? Looks a bit low. Uh, just some really great gifts. I love the note cards and the envelopes as well. The lovely foiled papers. And then of course we've got the 90 pound spends of the fabulous tree lot dies. That coordinates with the set. Um, in the catalogue and then you've got the wonderful award as well so and don't forget today is the last day to join good morning margaret how are you today is the last join to earn yourself that fabulous planner with the stamps you get notebooks that go with it so today is the last chance to Earn that for free. And of course, starter kit is £99 and you get to choose £130 of product. Right, let's see if we are in view, in shot. And then we will get rolling. Got a busy few days ahead. I've got a lot going on. We had a bank holiday weekend here in the UK. So Monday was a bank holiday. So hope you all did something really fun and exciting. We had a, quite a busy weekend, um, but I'll get into that when we start crafting. Let's share what we're doing. So I pulled out the cup of tea stamps because I absolutely adore this. I quite often use the elements from here, especially this flower. Um, and you will be seeing that one today. I won't be using it without with missing out on that one. Um, but I'm using it for my coffee and card tomorrow morning. And that's local. So if you are local and you've just tuned in, I'm at the Swan tomorrow morning between 10 and 12. So you can drop by, make a card with me. We're using this bundle um, and have a cup of tea or coffee for £5 and just have, have a little hour to yourself um, and a bit of company as well. So bundle here, £22 for the stamps or £43 with the dies, fabulous set. You've got these other dies that do work with the stamps as well, but you've got these lovely little tags, the hearts, and of course the flowers that work with this lovely, like leafy image here. So I'm gonna be using those. And then I'm gonna be focusing sort of on the window dies on here, um, just because they're so great, so, so great. Alfie Hare, of course, made an appearance. He's only just eaten his breakfast, so um, he should be settled now, I think, under the desk. So, yes, I'm going to be using the window dies. The window wishes I am in love with. I've been using this and using this and trying to use it as much for my non-festive uh, projects as possible so that come next month, which is only tomorrow, um, I will definitely start focusing more on Christmas. So, and as I said, I'm gonna be using this for my six card class um, and I'm teaming it with the plentiful plants. So I'm gonna be using some of these dies. Let's pull in a kit. I've mounted my stamps ready. Bring in the color combo of the day. So we've got shaded spruce, which to me is a very Christmassy green. Just move my grid paper. I didn't tape it down, did I? Good morning, Lucy Ann. How are you doing? So we've got shaded spruce, coastal cabana, sweet sorbet, soft suede. And I've pulled in grey granite just because I'm using Sahara sand, but I wanted ink in a slightly darker colour. Um, so that's my plan. So... That's our colour combo of the day. 
I better not put those out until I've fathomed out that my grid paper is in the right place. I'm going to zoom in if I can, teeny weeny bit, and get it taped down. I think we are good to go. Oh gosh, that was quite a zoom. Let's get something on here and see. See how close we are. Okay, so quite a bit of die cutting to do for you today. Um, and this is, I'm doing a thank you card, but it could, it could work for, for many different occasions. Oh, Lucianne, I'm sending lots of hugs your way, my lovely. I know times are really hard for you at the moment, but know that you are loved and you are being thought of, you and your family. Big hugs to your mum as well from me. Bless you all. Okay, so starting with a base. General size, excuse the baddie as well. That that was a lead burn, a dog lead burn. That is really painful. Anybody that knows what those extendable leads are like when they get you, really painful. So standard size base card, which is five and three quarters by the width of our cardstock, eight and a quarter. I feel like I'm very close. I might just have to try and zoom out a smidge. So I'm going to fold that one, put it to one side for a moment. And I've got various bits and pieces here. So I've got a front layer for my card, which measures three and three quarters by five and three eighths. That's quite a standard size. I'm going to do a bit of embossing on there. Let me pull out, didn't get it ready. I'm going to use the brick and mortar um, I am good, thank you, Lucianne. I'm very good. And this is such a good all-rounder. I don't know if you can see it that well. You'll see it when we emboss. But really good for sort of masculine cards, but equally perfect for using with the window wishes, especially the window dies, because it creates that lovely kind of brick wall texture. So I'm going to put that over by my cutting machine. And then I've got some scraps of cardstock here that we're going to be using for die cutting. That one's to stamp my greeting on. So how are we all doing? And did you have a great weekend? I know we're already halfway through. We're on hump day, aren't we? We're already halfway through the week, but it still feels like Tuesday to me because obviously we had the bank holiday and Monday felt like Sunday. It's a bit strange. I've also realised I'm going to be using my timber embossing folder. This is another free gift during celebration at the moment. So if you spend £45, you can earn this one for free. And it's normally £9.25. So a really great gift to have. One that I use a lot. Right, let us pull in. We're using all photopolymer today. All photopolymer stamps. Let's treat ourselves to a new, a new sheet of mini grid paper, and let's pull in some colours. In fact, I pulled in soft suede. I've got that in my pile, but I'm looking, and I've not even used it. I think I probably changed my mind halfway through and decided that grey granite was going to be the colour and that maybe so, uh, soft suede was a little too dark. Right, I need some scraps as well, which don't seem to have anything in my kit. So we're going to start pulling in this scrap. Now I've mounted up this lovely kind of foliage stamp. Um, and I've talked about this one before. It's really good. You could turn this into like heather or lavender doesn't have to be kind of grass but for my project today it's definitely going to be going to be grass oh this is a stiff one gotta be careful with these dark colors they just get everywhere don't they the deep pigment colors you seem to be always the ones that you're dipping your fingers in and then getting them on your project so my little wet wipe is handy and I can't, I haven't got my apron on today and I've got white trousers on so I need to resist 
wiping my hands on myself because, yeah, I could end up getting very inky. And I have to dash out to Waitrose after my live, so I don't really want to be wasting a change of clothes by rubbing my inky hands on my legs. Does anybody else do that? It's tempting, isn't it? That's the great thing about having a Stampin' Up! pinny, an apron, is that you can kind of, like, just dry your hands off if you, you know, when you've used your wet wipe or when you're cleaning in your chamois, you can just, like, wipe it in your apron and get rid of it. Okay, so I'm going to start with... Less of the waffle, Kerry. I, I can hear you. Start with the shaded spruce. And I'm going to stamp that over here because we have in the teacup dies we've got this fab die here that cuts out that image then I also want my favorite leaf image from this set and I'm going to do that one in shaded spruce as well and we'll put that one just there could have done it with a bit more ink on there. Can you see it's just a bit, a bit hit and miss, but I quite like that. It sort of gives a shadowy effect. Then I need some flowers. You all know how much I love this little flower from the set. And you probably remember if you've watched me before, can you see that little dot on that top petal? I have marked my dies. So these are the coordinating dies. I have also marked a dot on my dies so that when I've stamped it, I can line up really quickly those images. Right, let's just have a little look. I'm going to start with Coastal Cabana and do one in Coastal Cabana and I'm just going to clean it quickly in my chamois. Make sure that that, just give that a little dry off. And then I'll need a couple in Sweet Sorbet. And I'm going to do them all with that little dot facing to the top, like that. And just to remind me, we'll pop a little arrow there. Because my aging brain is doing some really strange things at the moment. You can ask my husband that this morning. Um, we were, we were getting ready. We always get up at the same time and I really wish we had twin sinks because we always get up together and I'm always heading off to another bathroom to clean my teeth or do something while he's getting ready. I try and time it so that when he's in the shower, I'm cleaning teeth. But today I was doing my cleanse, totally oblivious that he was cleaning his teeth and I finished and then I turned to him and said, have you done your teeth yet? And he looked at me as if to say, are you on another planet? He said, I've literally just done them because I was going to put the toothbrush away. Um, the toothbrush like container, the little pot that the, the toothbrush and the toothpaste sit in. Honestly, my brain definitely, definitely on another planet. Right, a little stamp that I'm using today, which I haven't used yet from this set, is this cute little tr uh, tree. See, look, the brain car. Now, it's kind of like an American, like, uh, what's the word? Help me out. Like an estate car. I mean, we have estate cars in this country, um, but it's got quite a long, a long body on it. So we're going to stamp one of those. Told you there was a lot of die cutting. And then we have the wheels that go with it and they are separate. I'm going to stamp my wheels in memento black. Okay, and so we need to do them separately because they have separate dies to cut them out. So I think, apart from our greeting, that's all of the elements that we need. It's going to be Lily's sixth birthday next week. Lucia, my goodness, where has that time gone? It is so scary, isn't it? How fast they're growing up. Super scary. And Vivi will be starting big school on Tuesday, Monday even. I just dunked my thumb in the Sahara sand ink. 
So the greeting I want to use, just because it fits nicely with, with the card. And as I've said, this card could kind of be a general card. Um, and if we didn't stamp the flowers, this could be a masculine card too. Um, but I thought, I quite like this greeting, thank you for your friendship. And I've just cut a skinny strip, but you may have like strips like this in your scrap box. And I can't really see whether that's lined up square. That was pretty good actually, bang in the middle. And I'm just stamping down on that skinny strip. So if you don't have pieces like this, I quite often get scraps that are skinny. You can just trim a couple off of a long edge. Okay, so thank you for your friendship. And that's all the stamping we need. We need to get going with some die cutting. We've got quite a bit of die cutting. Let's just push these inks out of the way. Good evening, Kim. How are you doing? I can see your name popping up. Right, let's do a bit of die cutting. Bring in the plate. Move some bits out of the way. I'm not going to be able to cut all of these in one go because I only have two flower dies. Oh, and we've got fresh washi tape, so I'm going to have to be. I'm just going to. If you kind of take the tack off or put it on your clothes, take it off with your fingers or just stick it to yourself a minute just so that you get a bit of kind of fibre on the back of it, then hopefully it won't be too sticky. We're just going to line these in. Can't see very well today. Mind you, that's probably mainly due to the huge scuff on my glasses where they keep falling on my head off of my head onto the floor. Yeah, they I I really how many every week I say this, I need to get to the optician. <laughs> Have I got there yet? No. Not yet. Give you a little bend, Kim. I am well, thank you. Tired as usual and brain as foggy as ever, but there we go. I'm taking the magnesium now, so hopefully that might make a little bit of difference. Who knows? Can but try. So I've been busy, busy around here. We've got um at the weekend, I'm hosting a baby shower for Sophie. So her baby is due on the 5th of October. So we've been planning a little, a little gathering. She doesn't want it to be, she doesn't want a lot of fuss. <laughs> um, so I'm just planning a gathering just for some close family and a couple of friends. Nothing big, nothing too major. I think there's only about 20 people coming. I really wanted it to be outside in the garden and the weather looks like it's going to change here on Friday. So it could be that we'll be in the house, which will be fine. We've got plenty of space. That is the one thing because we've got open plan living. So I'm not worried about that. It's just, you know, the aesthetics of it being outside would have been good. I mean, the weather could change, but I cannot see <laughs> it changing drastically enough to for us to be sitting outside. Anyway, all of these are ready to run through, so I'll run those through quickly. I hope you're doing okay, Kim. We just need to cut another flower. As I've said, this is fresh washi tape, so it's probably going to stick to be. How lovely is that? I think this leafy image here, this foliage, is one of my all-time favourite shapes. There's just something about it. I just love it. of this washi. I'm going to want, how cute is the flower? Need to do another one. 
So yeah, we had Saturday. Oh, I had Teddy. So Teddy is my youngest grandchild. He is 11 months. So I had him on Saturday afternoon and had him for a sleepover as well. He is the cutest little poppet. He is such a happy little bunny, such a smiler, even though he's teething and he does have his little moments, he's such a happy little poppet. So I had him overnight on Saturday, yep, yeah, lost track of days, Saturday evening. Right, I'm going to chop that one out because I need to do something else. Um, and Sunday morning, we did a bit of gardening, took Teddy back Sunday afternoon. Uh-oh, now which way up was it? <laughs> Let's see if we can piece that back in. It was that way. <laughs> now I know that my dot is just going to go straight at the top. Uh, yeah, so we, we've we had, last week we had a guy come to, let's put all of these dies away because we don't want to lose them, to do the, the roots on the trees, not the roots, the stumps. Um, and basically they use a special tool to kind of grind down into the tree trunk and take it right down so that it's obviously not above ground. Right, I want these two as well. Um, and it left a mountain of kind of soil wood chip around each of the three trees. So on Sunday morning, we were filling up the trailer, shoveling all of this dirt onto this trailer. And it was warm. It was really hard work. My ribs are still aching from shoveling and then lifting the spade up and over onto the trailer. Goodness me. But job done. It's done now. So I'm going to pop that through. So these are the lovely window dies. And I'm cutting them. If you saw me, I think I used these last week, week before. Cutting them both together. And then I need to do one more cut after. And then Sunday afternoon, after we dropped Teddy back, I we jumped in the motorhome and went not very far, not very far at all, but took a night out on a campsite down by the river, um, lit the barbecue, glass of wine, sat outside chilling, and then... We sat and watched The Greatest Showman. So just a nice evening. Um, just a change of scenery, really, being that it was bank holiday. OK, so I've just pushed those pieces out. I don't actually need that one, but I'm keeping all of these pieces because that's really handy kind of label shape that you can use for something. Now, I also need to cut a background so what did you all get up to I need to do one of these but just in white like that I just want that center the center panel I don't need the I've got drops is don't need the outer part so I'm just going to tape that down like that. And then on this um, shaded spruce layer, I'm going to use one of the edge dies. And I normally have been using this kind of curvy edge, like wavy, but I just want to use this one here. And I'm going to pop it down just to create a hill. I'll just tape that down there and run both of those through. So I did warn you there was lots of die cutting. But hopefully it will be worth it. You can be the judge of that. Get rid of the bits. 
so yeah really busy weekend and then sunday we did dog walk oh i have to be careful about saying that um don't need that bit and then a bit more gardening tidying up ready for the weekend trouble is we cannot do a lot of tidying up because the leaves are it the tree the well get your words out kerry the garden thinks it's autumn the leaves are falling like there's no tomorrow and it looks really messy it looks very autumnal out there so it's not really um looking its best but can't be helped so don't really want to do any tidying outside until closer to the weekend until it probably at least saturday so sarah you are back at school tomorrow your last day at home well enjoy your last day do something that makes you happy do something for you and then it will be a, a fresh new school year to start with which should be fun and exciting right i'm going to take my coastal cabana ink and just load up my blending brush just to add a bit of colour to this white back layer. Don't need too much. So just don't even know if you can see that. You normally see it against white. And what I'm going to do to start with is build up this layer. Now I want to attach, I want this hill to be on the background here. Let's chop off that bit because it's distracting. But I don't want it too high up because I want to pop this one behind and have, have a bit of a gap. So I think probably about there. So about half an inch up from the bottom. So if we just pop a couple of teeny dots of Tombow on the edge. So I've just put some little dots around the edge. And about there I said, didn't I? I'll just lay that down. I've got some bits of Tombow trying to escape from under here. And then I'm just going to trim off the edges. And I tend to kind of get my scissors underneath that edge. Just so that I'm not cutting right on the edge. I'm kind of under that layer. It's a little bit hanging over there. And a bit on the corner. So we've just got that layer. Oscar's going into year three, into the juniors. Oh, is he excited, Lucianne? Vivi's very excited about starting school. Right, I'm just gonna add on this layer. So just some teeny, you can put Tombow all on that bit. But just some teeny dots of Tombow on those narrow pieces. And we'll just layer that down move it around so it not hanging over any edges and let that stick for a moment so we've like created this little scene inside of our window i think that's all i can do with that for a moment right what i need to do is a little bit of embossing so I've got my front layer of my card, which I'm going to emboss with the brick and mortar. Now, the folded edge of your embossing folder should always go in your machine first. But I want my brick wall to be this way because of the shape of my paper. So I'm going to line that in that way, but obviously run it through that way with that fold going through first 
the window, yeah, the windows are just so, so usable. And because this is a, a textured embossing folder, um, like a 3D one, it needs to just go on the layer one with the number four plate, with the standing cut emboss machine. And they run through so lovely with ease. Yeah, this window die is, it's brilliant. I mean, the dies on their own, you could use the trees, the bow, these edge ones and this, and maybe the car. But I feel you need the stamps for the rest of them. So I definitely would recommend that you do get the whole bundle. If it's something you're going for, bundle is £47.50. And remember, if you do that order today, you'll earn yourself a free gift. So that's the brick and mortar. Now I want to just emboss this little skinny strip with the timber. Let's try and get it straight. So I'm just going to run that through. <clears throat> so we end up with this little layer. The set, so Kim, the set is Window Wishes. Is this the one we're talking about? And then the dies are just called the Window Dies, but obviously they're on a bundle. I absolutely love it. I was using it last week, using the dies. Um, in fact, I've got them right here. Well, I think you probably caught up last week, but I was using them with, with the free celebration papers, so just the Window Dies. But there you can see that lovely garland that I've used. And the house, obviously, is from that set and the little tree. And then we also did the little biscuit box as well. That was last week's projects. But yeah, they're just, it's, I just love it. And I'm just finding, like you're seeing, that I'm teaming it with other stuff as well. Okay, so what we're going to do now, ready to start building up. We're going to pull in our base take this front layer I've got a lovely new Tombow as my other one I thought there was some in there I used the last bit and then when I tried to squeeze some glue out just air came out and that's a good sign that it is empty okay so we've just got that lovely brick layer down Excuse me, still got a bit of a tickle. Seems to be like hanging on, lingering. Right, next I want to get this window frame down and I'm not putting it directly in the middle, which now I'm looking at my card and thinking, maybe it should be, but I'm gonna stick with the original plan. Because if I move it to the middle, I might not have enough room. Um let's do it in the middle and then we can compare what they look like so I'm just adding some Tombow and remember you're sticking this onto an embossed layer so you need maybe a bit more glue than you might do and you need to hold it down there make sure that it's stuck right that is down and then we're going to add in this little layer and I can see there's just a little bit of overhang on the white under there so I'm just going to trim that bit off because I don't want that to show and then we're going to stick that straight down into this frame Oh, that is in there, a bit of cardstock. So straight down in the middle like that. I just think that's really, it's like a room with a view, isn't it? You're sat inside. You've got exposed brick walls on the inside of your house like we've got. Bit of glue there. And you're looking out onto this lovely hill. 
with a view. Okay. Can't pick anything up. I do actually have nails at the minute and I still can't pick anything up. Let's just pop these two together. So we're going to put a little bit of glue on there. And just put, attach the wheels to the car. Then we can do that bit after. Let's just give this a little curl. I'm going to pop a couple of dimensionals just at the top part of this, just so that it kind of pops up. And I may have to do, I want to try and wedge that under there slightly. Might have to do a little trim. So what I'm aiming to do, can you see I've not completely glued all the way along there. I'm just going to lift that a little bit. I want to just wedge this under like that. I think that'll work. I don't think it'll be too high. So a little bit of Tombow at the bottom. Pull off the backs. And I'm just going to kind of slide that under and push it down. Straighten it up like that. And then I'll pop our little car in. It's going to curve it slightly. Uh, we better put two to balance it out. Always like to work in even numbers, me. I know quite often we have to work, oop, work in in threes when we're like sticking gems and things down. We just have a little car coming down the hill. We'll add in this lovely bit of foliage, which is slightly not stamped enough, but I don't care, I'm happy with how it looks. It's giving it a more rustic kind of feel. Actually, I'm going to put that on after. Let's pop on our kind of windowsill. I never know which side that I want to use because both look good on here. I think we'll make that the back. Pop a couple of minis along there. I feel like this has taken me ages. What time are we? 45 minutes with a lot of chat. And we're just gonna pop that little windowsill down there. Try and get it straight. A little bit of glue on here to anchor the bottom. And we're gonna pop that here. And then, add in our flowers. Dunked my finger in the ink then. Oh, Alfie's got a thirst on. I didn't even hear him go down actually. And we'll just add in these flowers to brighten up the card. And it's at this point where if you were thinking of making this slightly masculine, because I think with the car on there, you could. I would maybe not put flowers on. I, I guess personal preference, or maybe not such bright flowers. And then our little greeting. Just gonna run, gonna put glue on there. Run that along the bottom. Straight if we can. Add a little bit of bling. So I'm using the rhinestones. These, these and the pearls are my favourites because they kind of just go with everything. Still on my same bit of putty. And we'll just push off 
and add these to the centers. I was thinking I've got some other new gems and I was thinking of using those. But then I just like that pop of bling. And then to finish, the good old faithful linen thread. Oh, are you a loose bit? Just got a little kind of thread coming off of the thread. Get rid of that. Tie a little bow. I think this evening is going to be a plum picking adventure. The tree is just bursting at the seams. So heavy with plums. Still got some apples on the tree, so I need to make some plum and apple jam. That's one of my favourites to make. And then we'll just add that with a glue dot. Does anyone else make jam? This year I've made raspberry, blackcurrant, blackcurrant and apple. So all of the fruits that we've had, I've turned into jam to use it up and I do I eat jam every day on my toast which isn't very healthy um but I make it in my thermomix and it is so easy so so easy because you kind of just let it get on with it you haven't got to be watching it and there we go a little scenery card with a little car in there quite like that car it's I could see it with some trees on top of it or some gifts or something stacked on there. Um, bit of food for thought. I wonder if the little tree, that little tree there, if that was cut out and popped on top, what that would look like. So yeah, a good all-rounder card. I feel like it is quite bare up here, but I didn't want to sort of add in the garland. I've got a garland here in a different colour, but... I think this just makes it feel way too festive. But on a second thought, imagine this as a Christmas card. Take out the foliage, take out the flowers. Um, what could you add in instead? The candles maybe on the windowsill. Uh, but with the car in the background, with the tree on top. So it's great how the mind evolves, isn't it? When you create a project, you can kind of just stretch further with it. So this was my original card where I moved the window over to the left because I was having this kind of overhang. But to be fair, it doesn't look a lot different, really. I quite like it in the middle, I think. I think I prefer it in the middle. So you can see the difference where this leaf is much darker. I didn't quite ink it up enough on that one. So that's card number one. Let's tidy up some tools. We've got stuff everywhere. Let's get rolling with the next. So I want to share my six cards with you quickly before we go. So next card, we are actually going to be using some of the teacups. And the fabulous, lovely Christmas paper from the um, July to December mini catalogue the sweetest christmas yeah sweetest christmas paper i've been using this quite a bit so i've got some of it here you can see all my scrappy bits because we never throw away those small pieces it's just such a fun festive pack of paper that you could use non for your non-festive projects as well obviously not candy canes but you can cut these out with the dies that go with that bundle i'll show you it in the catalogue but the patterns are really great. The reverse sides are not necessarily super Christmassy. You know, all of these you can use on your general cards. Where's my mini catalogue? So the bundle, in fact, this bundle is winging its way to me. The sweet candy canes. So obviously in the dies there. You get that lovely like stripy background but you get the candy canes there as well so love that <clears throat> love that bundle right lots of bits and pieces in here looks like we've got a bit of scrap for die cutting 
And I'm going to show you a bit of a technique on this one. Not a technique, but just another trick using that window die. Um, let's fold our base to start with. Put it to one side. Move that washi tape. And I've cut myself a front layer, and I think this is slightly larger than the general. Yeah, three and seven eighths by five and a half. And then I've cut another piece, an eighth smaller. This is my general size, three, oh, no, it's not. Three and five by five and a quarter. So slightly shorter, so that we've got a good border all around the outside. So those are gonna go on the front of my card, but we're gonna do something with this layer here. But first, let's do some stamping. Let's get the stamping bits out of the way and we can kind of cut all together. Right, let's find, I think this is my scrap piece for stamping. I've done a couple of bits of a head. So I just need a little flower. Let's give that a clean because it's still got sweet sorbet on it. Oops, it just fell off. Mount it with that. Let's do it that way. Prefer to hold the block that way. That little dot at the top. So I need one of those like that. I need another one of these leaves and I'll try and ink it a bit better this time. So it's slightly more solid. Can do that over there. A bit of a rock moment there. Then from the cup of tea, I've got this cute little tag here and I really like this sentiment here. It's time for tea. And we are going to do a teacup on here. So I've mounted up that little tag. So I'm going to put that one down there. And then, oops, upside down. The little sentiment. It's time for tea. We'll do that. In the shaded spruce. And just pop that inside our little tag. And we can cut that out in one go. I think that's it for stamping bits and pieces. So let's cut that off. And I always cut off any excess because once you run this through your die cutter machine, you will get kind of an etched finish to it from your plate where your plate has had die cuts on it. Um, so I always like to keep my cardstock smooth. So I always cut off any excess. So I need to trim those out got some other die cut pieces to do. So let's bring in the plates and get cutting. Right. Oh, before I do that, I need to stamp something else. Nearly forgot. Put that scruffy one to one side. I need this teacup. So, Kate, you prefer that last card with the my comments aren't coming up on here. They're definitely not showing. I only just caught that on my phone. Don't know why. But yeah, so you've got two teacup designs that you can stamp here. So you've got the nice stripy one, which I love. But you've also got this like outline one. So what I'm going to do... Let's grab a piece of Coastal Cabana and then in Coastal Cabana ink, I'm going to stamp my teacup. How beautiful is that? And I think I might need another scrap, which I did put some away earlier. Let me just grab another piece. Wide enough. That should be okay. Because I need to get another... No, I don't. I don't need a wider piece. I was thinking of something else. See, look, the brain goes off on a tangent. <laughs> so that's the stamping done. Let's get a bit of cutting done. I'm going to trim that. Pop these down. And then I've also put on here a piece of 
sweet sorbet because from the window dies I want to cut myself a little bow I also need this edgy one so I'm making use of all the dies that I can I'm finding uses for them so let's tape you down and um, it is a bit of a random random way of using I need another piece of Sahara sand. Bear with me. Didn't get that piece out. Just want a scrappy bit. So we'll put that one that way because it will run through my machine better. So yeah, I've been trying to fathom ways of how can I use all these these dies. So you've also got this lovely intricate die here. If you weren't stamping, we need the tag, the leaf and a flower. Right. You can see that I've run over that die with another die. Not something I recommend you do. If you can help it. Right, so line that one in. Tape it well down so it doesn't move by the time we get over there. Do the foliage. Oh, am I going to get the flower in? It's a bit close, isn't it? We shall see. Line in the tag bit more washi tape. It's quite close but there is a little gap between. You should be okay as long as it doesn't move otherwise I'm going to run over that die with that one. Get that top plate on and we'll cut all of those in one go. With the weather forecast saying that it's going to turn a little bit and I've looked sort of ahead to next week and it does look pretty damp. The garden needs it desperately. I'm sure the farmers need it. But I think when it's wet weather, it's the perfect excuse to craft. Because we can't be outside working. So why not be huddled up in your craft space creating... when it's dreary outside. Right, so we've got that cute little bow die cut. I do need to do another one of those. That's one and truly stuck. So we'll just stick that one back down. I did warn you it was quite, quite heavy on the die cutting. But of course, I do a lot of waffle in between as well, so. But I love, I love that we have so many dies that coordinate with our stamped images. It just, it's just brilliant. It's such a great idea. All right, all dies back in places. I do need one more die cut. Um, that's from my stylish shapes and I just want that one there. Am I going to get that out of that scrap? It's going to be tight, but we'll aim for it. We best tape it so it doesn't move when I turn around. So I'll just run those through quickly. Then we can start assembling. Oh no, I've got one more bit of die cutting to do. Goodness me. I'm going to need that plate there. Because I need to explain to you how I've done the next bit. 
Right. Oop, washi tape is now tearing. I've got all these bits and pieces. Let's put the dies away. Right, what we want to do next, move all that out of the way. We're taking our top layer. Okay, so this measured three and three, three and five eighths by five and a quarter. And then from the window dies, I'm gonna pull back in this one. I'm gonna create ourselves a frame. I don't know if you remember last week, I made a different frame with this one. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this die not too far from the edge over here. I've got glue under my nail now, something. I'm going to have to get it, it will annoy me. don't know what it is, maybe ink. So I want it to be straight either side here and I want it to be close-ish to the top. Like that, so on an even amount either side. Uh, another piece of washi. The brain was like, what do you need? What are you looking for? And then I'm going to run that right the way through like that. So that I end up with that. Now, let's just get rid of that. I stuck to it. Off you go. Now we've got this piece here, which is left, which we can use for something else. And we've got this centre panel that we can also use for something else. But I want to put this back in my machine with this die. It's going to curve it back. And I'm going to line this back in into my kind of aperture that I've made. And you can kind of feel, when, when you put this die in, you can feel these edges butting up to this edge here. And I want to make sure that this point is at least on this line here. So where it curves, it needs to be just a bit lower. And the way that I've, I've made this quite a large frame, but if you basically look for that kind of depth here, you should be okay. So I'm just making sure that that die is kind of pushed in. I'm going to tape it down and I'm going to run it through my machine, but not all the way, don't need to run it all the way through. Where's my top plate? I'm just going to pop it in and run this top bit over. Just to cut that bottom edge. And hope that I've done it right. So that we end up with this lovely aperture. So this window die is more than meets the eye, if that's the right saying. It's more than meets the eye. I'm not sure if that's right. Um, you can do so much more with it. Don't know whether I would find a use for that, but don't want to encourage you to keep every single scrap. I'm pretty good at that, aren't I? Hola, Janet. How are you? From the horrid humidity. It's been a bit muggy here as well. How are you doing, my sweetheart? Nice to have you join us. Okay, so I've created this lovely, lovely frame aperture. What I want to do now is going to do a little trick. Not a trick, but do something with these because 
These are like the windowsill of the frame. That's kind of what it's designed for. It's designed to sort of sit along the bottom of the window like that. But I thought, what else can we do with these little pieces? So let's bring in a scrappy piece. And what I want to do is I want to attach these. Oh, I can't pick anything up. To the bottom part of this aperture. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it round. Let's take that out. Actually, I don't think I need that. Get some Tombow. And I'm just going to put a little run of glue if it will come out. Come on. Yeah. Like that. Just going to spread it slightly. And I'm going to lay these down with the back showing because this is the reverse. And I'm just going to pop them. If I line this up with the line, it will help me get these straight. So let's just press that down onto the glue. So I'm just following a line on my grid. So turn that one over so that the front is facing down. Oops, totally moved that. We'll just put another one next to it with a little gap in between. Following a line on the grid, I need a little bit more glue this end. This is very random. It, it was just like, how can I use these little strips? And this is just one way that you could do them with. You could create like a whole background just to add a different kind of dimension. You're not sticking very well, are you? Stay there, matey. And that's fine. I don't mind that it's flapping around. I'm going to stick it down. So I've just created this little texture. Texture? No. Well, it is kind of texture on top of this layer. And then this little, this banner, I'm going to put behind it. So just how, I'm just going to add glue to the very end of that banner. Pop it on a line, get it straight, and then add that on top, like that. And concentrate while you get it straight. Okay. So we're just creating a different look. Okay, just creating a different look. You know, you've got a bit of texture in there. And then I've cut a strip of the designer paper at three inches by five inches. And we're gonna stick that behind like that. Now how much, got quite a bit of a gap. So we'll put a little bit of Tombow. You can have Tombow on there. Just pop that over the top. Now, because of like the diamonds on here, we need to make sure this layer underneath is straight. Otherwise, it could make the whole project. Let's just twist it a bit. Look a bit. Can you see here? It looks a bit crooky. That could be because this layer isn't straight. But that's going to be hidden anyway, so not going to worry about that. So we just created a little aperture layer. This would have looked nice if we'd have used dimensions, dimensionals under here just to lift this layer from the back layer. Put a bit down there. And then we're going to pop that onto our Sahara sand piece with a nice even frame around it all. So I was just trying to think of how these little strips could be used to add, just to add, you know, a bit of something different to a card. 
but I just love the whole idea of using that window to create, you know, like an, this lovely oval, oval frame. And we can actually put that now onto our card base. The sun is coming out. You can see a break in the clouds, which is lovely. Got some washing to go out when I finish before I head off to Waitrose. Um, need to get that out and get it dry. It's got a bit of glue on there. Right, I can see that I've just need a bit just under this layer here, just a bit of glue. Like that, just to hold it down. So we just created something a little different. But think of other ways that you could use these, this long die to create stripes. Right, let's start adding in our stamped elements. Need to grab the pieces that I did earlier which are here and then we've got some more flowers got our little tag we need to pierce a hole in that one so my little mat just going to take my take your pick tool create a little hole and then just give it an extra push to make it slightly bigger because I want to get some linen thread through there. So I'm just going to feed that through. And might attach it with a glue dot. I can pick one up. Stick it to the glue dot and then we'll add a couple of dimensionals to that one and we're going to put that, <clears throat> the frog is back, behind our cup. So if we attach another, I could probably just pick it straight up from there, another glue dot. Oops, I don't know why my glue is in my bin pot. So I've just popped a little glue dot on there and I'm just going to attach might be a bit long, but just attach that behind like that. We can pop that now. Let's pop some dimensionals behind our teacup. Pop that down onto our card. So I feel like I haven't used the teacup stamps for what well, it's called cup of tea for a little while. I did use some flowers recently for something I did, but haven't used the actual teacup image for a little bit. I'm gonna pop that there and leave that there for a moment. Add a dimensional just at the top of these, oops, just pulled the back off of another one. And then my usual little dot of glue at the bottom to anchor it in place. I'm just gonna wedge those down into the teacup like that. Add in our flowers. And I did try, I faffed around with this for ages. Oh, I just need to plug my MacBook in. My battery is flashing low. That's it. Um, what was I saying? Brain is gone. Brain has well and truly gone. I do not know where it's gone, but it's gone. We'll just add these flowers in. Just 
give them a little press and hold. I actually love sweet sorbet as a colour. I never thought I would, but I absolutely love it. Then I'm going to peel off the backs of these. And pop it down there. Add a little bit of bling. Just in there. Oh, my back's aching now. It's talking to me. After all that shoveling. It was hard. It's hard work shoveling. We were shoveling mud off of the ground and lifting it up onto a trailer. Bit of Tombow here on the back of my bow. It's hard work. As I said, my rib cage definitely talking to me. And we'll just pop that one there like that. And we're gonna call it done. So no kind of official greeting. It's just time for tea. So it's a bit of a hello card. Uh, Janet, you've got perfect Spanish blue now. So I'm trying to read off my phone and my eyes won't focus. I'll have to stand on tiptoe. The rain will be back here. Yeah, I'm sure it will be. Sure it will be. Just scrolling back, sorry. Kim, you said a lovely base for a Christmas card. Yeah. So there we go. There's my original. Pretty much the same. Move all of these inks out of the way. Bring the other two back in. So kind of quite Christmassy colours, I feel. I would use these for Christmas for sure. Um, even the Coastal Cabana I would use for Christmas. Um, but yeah, just showing really. My, my main focal point today was showing how this window die can be used definitely for non-Christmas. But all year round, to create a frame like this, you can use that all year round um, and have so much fun creating things with that. You could make it shorter. You could definitely make that, that oval shape. You could shrink it. You just have to be a bit more careful when you're doing the die cutting, not to roll right into the, into the die too much. So, so yeah, hope you've enjoyed those. They're quite bright and fresh, aren't they? love love those colors just wanted to quickly share with you my six card class for next month next month yeah because it is only tomorrow it feels like it's here already um but of course don't forget celebration last day today if you want to order something please do get in touch um I will be having an order going through. I, I said maybe, but I know I will be. There's stuff that I need to get. Um, and lots of free gifts along with that lovely join gift as well. Then, of course, we've got the perfect partners coming next month. So the six extra new die sets that coordinate with products in the annual catalogue. Then we've got our World Card Making Day event. That's 1st of October. But from tomorrow, you can order this lovely exclusive new, it's a million dollar sales, Jenny Pauly's million dollar sales stamp set. So I love that. And a little sneak, be a quick sneak of my six cards. So again, using the windows. With the plentiful plants and then we're doing three very Christmassy ones as well so I did some of these with my team recently so that is about to go up onto my events website um, I just need to finalize finalize the the post before it actually goes up so Belle, you've been lurking around. That's good to know. Thank you so much for your lovely comment. So, yeah, um, thank you all for stopping by. I desperately need a cup of coffee now. I'm feeling a bit parched. I'm going to have a tidy up, dash out, come back, and then get stuck into some work, and then 
some probably gardening work later this evening so and I do love that with my job that's one perk I can choose the hours that I work um so sometimes like when I've got grandchildren in the day I will come and I'll work in the evening do a couple of hours in the evening that's the beauty of what I do I just love that flexibility so yeah a great reason to join so don't forget today is the last day to to get that free gift gift there will be another promotion coming I'm sure um, and of course during celebration we always have a great join offer so but for now I'm going to leave you with these bright pretty cards um, suitable for different occasions and I will bid you farewell thank you so much for your lovely comments thank you Kate thank you Julie thank you so much for stopping by I know it's not my usual day if you're catching up on the recheck replay on youtube please do leave a comment i will get back to you um but i'll say goodbye for now so goodbye